We're back for another episode of the Swing Hard Podcast. I'm delighted to be here today with Dave Nykirk. Dave, you've been with the organization a while. You love golf. You've got some great experiences to share. Thanks for being here. Great to be here, Barry. I got some stuff to share. I'm looking forward to this. We look forward to it. It's always fun and engaging, having conversations, spending time together. We've done a little bit of videoing. I know we want to do more moving into, the, uh, moving into next year. But maybe you can, we can just back up a bit and tell us how you got into the game of golf and, and how that kind of evolved in, in your life. You know, it's funny, Barry, because I didn't really start till I was 20. 20 years old. 20 years old. I was done playing hockey, you know, Junior B All-Star. So you played competitive hockey. Played competitive. Yeah. Junior B with a tongue-in-cheek, right? Some Junior A, but um, I needed to channel some of my, you know, my athleticism into something. I picked up a golf club when I was 20. Um, by the time I played for four years, I was about a four handicap and decided to join the ranks of the PGA. Wow. So you didn't play no golf until you were 20, like never picked up a club. Baseball and hockey. See, you know, there's so many people that become good golfers when they start with hockey. And it's one of those great transitional sports that we have in Canada. A lot of people actually, kids growing up, they play hockey in the winter, they play golf in the summer. Obviously it aided you in, in uh, golf for sure. Yeah, and I played hockey and baseball left-handed. Really? So I started off my first two weeks, Fairmont Hot Springs, worked on the grounds crew, played left-handed. Really? Yeah. So what was the switch? Well, the Didn't switch like the way the ball is going left. Yeah. <laughs> the the switch is at Fairmont. You have to aim if you're a lefty, and yeah, most lefties hit a cut, right? right. But right. I hit a huge cut slice, and I'd have to aim at the houses out of bounds and bring it back into play. Yeah. And if you pull it, you know you're paying for a window, and when you're 20 years old and <laughs> working on a minimum wage, it's so I asked the pro, Lauren Rowe. You right. know, bless his heart, he's gone now, but he said, Dave, you wavy, try right-handed. And so I played the rest of my time. Of course, I hit a huge fade, you know, playing right-handed. Wow. Uh, but I could start at the trees and work it back into the fairway. So you play golf right-handed. What about other things in your life? Like, do you write right-handed, left-handed? What? Write right-handed, throw right-handed, catch lap. Like a normal quote every way except, you know, sports, um, baseball and hockey left, golf right. Wow. Yeah. So took the game up when you were 20. Maybe you can kind of... Talk to us a little bit about your career and, and you know, where it's taking you to kind of where you are today. Yeah, 28 years, Barry. You know, I'm kind of reaching back Goes here. Goes fast, right? I'm reaching back here a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Derek Hawes gave me my first start at the Springs and Radium. Um, that's where I started. Um, and I was fortunate because they had the Stone Creek Golf Academy there. A fellow by the name of Ted Hellard had a yep. golf academy. So I, you know, I experienced Don Herter, mm -hmm. top 50 instructor in the States for a year teach. Jerry Elwell for, you know, for two years, uh, teaching Stephen Ames. Right. And uh, yeah, I got the bug for teaching, you know, and so a bunch of seminars and, you know, you get in the fire and you learn by doing. And here we are now, you know, still learning every lesson, but uh, yeah. with uh, quite a bit more knowledge. So over those years, I mean, you've done a lot of teaching and it's something that you're really great at. You've got a great way to connect with people, you know, look at their swings. But I think teaching, like, I think any golfers had some lessons or, or they've, you know, met golf pros, but so much of it is to me, at least the good experiences I've had is what's that communication like with that pro and are they actually seeing things in your individualized swing that can aid you in your golf game? How many people do you think you've, you've taught? Like, I know it's in the hundreds, probably even thousands for sure at this point. Yeah, I've, I've thought about that number a few times. It's like instead of counting sheep, you know, right. I, fall asleep, I, count, I count lessons, right? Uh, I was at Kokanee for six years at the golf school there, and I would see 900 people in five months. Wow. Um, and so that that's pure on, you know, teaching on the range, uh, chipping, pitching, putting, and, right. and playing on the course. So probably over 19,000 lessons. 19,000. Yeah. Wow, that's that's incredible. So um, I, I, I know... Each of us has our own individual experiences. I know for me, generally, I think there's one or two people that were really influential in your life and, and bringing the golf out of you. For me, it was my dad, yeah. for sure, without question. Is there anybody for you that you point back and go, you know, this person really had a positive influence in making me you know, fall in love with this game? You know, there's a few of them. <clears throat> and, and I think the easiest one for me to pinpoint was Derek Haas because he gave me the start. Okay. Little English guy, hello there, you know. Right. He, he was a kind of a neat character, and uh, in the team at at the Springs at that time was it was just a really great team. 
with a bunch of different personalities. But Derek gave me the start. I watched him teach. You know, I didn't get a paid lesson for three years, Barry, because you have to learn your craft. Yeah. So I would say Derek Haas. Yeah. Yeah. And what a great place to start playing. I mean, there's some good golf courses in the valley there, right? In that Radium Invermere whole valley is some great golf. Oh, the Springs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of them, like you say, there's so many good ones. Right. But back 28 years ago, Barry, it was like the Springs. It was less, the resort. Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit less, but <clears throat> a great place to start nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. So 19,000 teaching opportunities or, or lessons that you've taught Maybe you can tell us some of the best experiences you've had or unique, fun, engaging stories. Yeah, so I'll go to two ends of the spectrum. Okay. Okay, the one that made me cry. So some members at Windermere, they have a grandson. He's 10 years old. He's blind. Been blind since birth. Wow. And, you know, he water skis, and, and he's living his life, right? And so Ruth and George come in, and they say, hey, can we get him a lesson? Daniel was his name. I said, sure. So we get to the range. You know, he's... It's humbling, Barry, because he's holding my arm. He doesn't know where he's going. Right. Um, so we get up to the tee and, I, you know, put the club in his hands. And uh, I just tell him to swing it, just to swing it. And basically, I had to relate stuff that, that he knows. He knows hot and cold, right? So hot is red, hot water. Right. Cold is blue, like the lake where he water skis. So I showed him, this is red. You don't want red water. You want blue water. So sure enough, he was swinging it in the blue zone. Yeah. And I teed, I would team up for him and he hit three in a row, about 70 yards with a seven iron. And I mean, I was at 10 years old at 10 years old. So, you know, I, obviously he can't see my expression and whatnot, right. but I'm sure he could feel my energy. <clears throat> and after that lesson, I was done for the day. Barry, I sat in my car and I just cried. How, how amazing that was to influence this, this little guy and get him involved in a game of golf, but also the gift that he gave me that, you know, that I can help them. So that was the one, that was a really heartfelt one for me. Yeah. And then I taught a fellow from Holland whose son was on exchange at Windermere and he had, uh, he, he had one arm, he lost an arm in a car in a farm accident as mm -hmm. a kid. And he swung right handed, but he had one line, he had his left arm and this thing was massive. Right. Like he grew up. He had with, to do everything with his left hand. Had right? to do everything with his left hand. Yeah. And so, yeah, he was an eight handicap and he never drew the ball before. And, really? and so, yeah, cause he was, you know, he was a little steep and he would cut it and stuff. And, and so basically I, I, you know, we worked on a pattern where he could actually leave the club behind him and turn his chest and square it that way. And so I played nine holes of them and, and out of the five driving holes, he had four draws. Wow. So that was really fun. Got a little more distance out of his ball. Got too. a little more distance out of that. Yeah. But that, that was kind of neat. Obviously a thousand more, but you know, they'll, they'll come out a different time. Wow. Did you get an opportunity to teach the 10 year old again? Um, did, do you know anything after that experience or? Well, I knew that they were there for two weeks and I did see him on the putting green. Right. And I, and, uh, I think so, he, he did go out and play with his grandparents, but, uh, yeah. And then he grew up and then I got older. Right. And moved away. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure you have a thousand other, you know, stories and experiences. I think we all do. And I think that's the, the one thing, if I had to pinpoint one thing that I love about golf more than anything else is those human interactions and experiences. Yeah. When, when the dust settles, that's what it is for me. It's, it's you, it's part of our team. It's those guests, it's those members, it's the suppliers. It's all of that coming together in those human interactions. That's just magical. Yeah, we sell ourselves. Right. It just so happens we, you know, we stand for a product, we support <clears throat> products, um, but we're really selling ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I believe that's the human element, Barry, because people can go anywhere. But the fact we're lucky enough to have them and we get a chance to treat them, you know, we're actually selling ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, in the 28 years you've been a PGA pro um, and you've been involved in golf, lots changed. Um, where, where, from your perspective, where are we at today in the industry and what do we need to do? I mean, we've been, we've benefited from, from COVID. I think there's, you know, most people realize that golf courses has been a little bit busier, but what do you think we need to do as an industry to kind of take that next step, get more people involved in the game, you know, get more clubs in people's hands? Yeah, that's, you're right. COVID did blow this game up. Right. In a good way. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're doing at Mickelson is uh, we're going to be hosting some, you know, drop in harmony community free swing classes. Right. We, we need to get people on the tee with a club in their hands, give them a good experience 
and just continue to get new people into the game because as you know population gets older yeah right and you know they're done playing need the next generation we need the next generation we want that experience that we all feel and have throughout this game barry to go you know you got to have this in your life and you know that's that's what we share every day right and i i I talked about this with somebody else on, on another podcast but for me you can you can see the interaction with somebody when they just have one great positive experience something related to golf they'll come back yeah and that's the key. And so I'm glad to hear, you know, doing some of those things. I'm sure you're the one driving those initiatives, just getting clubs in people's hands. Um, what, what opportunities for growth do you, do you think there are? Different segments of, of you know, people or, or individuals that we should focus on as an industry? Well, I think, you know, I think everyone has an opportunity to influence it, right? And I right. think that, you know, as you know, you develop a culture in, in, in a business and a facility in that culture just brings every, everyone brings their good pieces. Right. And I think that for the one thing that we can do is just make sure that everyone that shows up in front of us leaves there going, that was awesome. Right. And it's like, Hey, I want to be back there. Just a, the people were great. This amazing putter green at Mickelson national. That was yeah. so much fun. Like, I think that's a gateway berry for a lot of people at harmony and in all around Calgary. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And one of the difficult things, I'm curious to know how you deal with this to make sure they have that great experience. Golf's tough, right? Like, you know, I've mentioned this before too. Like I'm not immune to hitting the occasional shank, right? Like, and I've been playing a long time, but it's a tough sport. And so, you know, what are the things you focus on? You know, somebody that's new, somebody that you're meeting for the first time to ensure that they do have that good experience because it can be frustrating. There's no question. Yeah, and everyone's different. <clears throat> right. Right. Uh, right. Someone brings something to the table all the time. And I've always said that with people. They inquire, hey, how should I start? How many lessons should I take? I'm, it's like a blind date. Take one. Yeah. And see your experience with it. And for the most part, those of us that have done it long enough and are fortunate enough, you know, to give them two little wins. So, you know, if it's holding a 10 foot pot, right? And then, right. you know, you're going to cheer them on and then they're going to, and the next time they go out, they're going to want to make a 10 foot putt. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, swinging and balance is, is a, is a good big thing one. is a big thing for people. Yeah. Um, when you set the expectation of how hard the game is to people, they start to realize that this is a hard game. And when they do experience a win, it's like, wow, that was awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, in a lot of ways our teaching professionals like yourself are a lot of the unsung heroes in the industry, because like you said, generations get older, you know, people tend to gravitate once they're, I'm not going to say hooked on the game, but they really enjoy it. They're going out on the golf course a lot. You know, those people that are extremely into the game and trying to improve their game, of course, they're taking lessons and doing things, but it's always a cycle of, of finding new people. And and it's an important part of what we do because without those new people, we don't have a business. We, we, you know, we can't operate. Um, and so it's an important part of the game. Um, tell me, you know, we've been talking a lot about teaching and and, some of your history. We've all got great experiences that relates to golf, you know, people we've met or situations we've been involved. Tell me a couple of your best golf stories. Wow. You know, um, you know, I've, I've played some tournament golf and, uh, and of course, these young guys are so good now, right? Oh. <laughs> you know, you're, you need a laser to find them where they hit the right, ball in the right. fairway, either ahead of you or in the woods. Yeah. Uh, but I did manage, uh, I was commissioner on the, um, the Pro Series Tour in the Kootenays for a couple of years when I was in the Kootenays. And, yeah. And uh, on a pretty blustery day, um, you know, I was one over coming down to 18. It was a crosswind. And it was, it was time to step up. And I'd only been playing for about eight years at that point. I think there was about 30 guys in the field. And, you know, I just, I kind of knuckled down, I guess, and I hit the shot I had to hit. And, you know, nervous. Right. Right. Kind of uncharted territory. With a yeah. stick in the ice, I'm pretty comfortable. Right. Uh, and managed to make the putt. You know, shot one over in a pretty blessed three day and won my first pro tournament. So that was, you know, that was my own experience there. And then uh, I would say just playing golf with my kids, Barry. Oh, good for you. Any other, you know, my son, he grew up on the golf course. My daughter didn't really play much golf, but she's very athletic. And so we'd get, you know, we'd head out in the cart and right. have family time. Yeah. You know? 
you know, I love both of those situations. I mean, I, I haven't won a golf tournament in a long time, probably since for sure, since I was a junior. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, you memorize, you remember those experiences for sure. But I love what you said about family. You know, one of the things that I think gets lost sometimes is how much of a family game, family sport golf is. You know, you can take off, especially here in Canada, you can get done work to off five, six, 7 PM yeah. in the evening and go and play three holes, six holes, 12 holes. doesn't matter. But do it the people you love, the people you're closest to. Um, and it's just, those are remarkable, awesome experiences. Yeah, and, and they're experiences <clears throat> for life. And, right. you know, on that note, I'd be remiss not to mention that when I was at Kokanee, my last year teaching is when I met my wife. Wow. So I would have at to... At the golf course? Teach it, taking lessons, Barry. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like we still don't know how the planets align. And she decided <laughs> to, she decided to take up golf and her and two of her friends came out to Kokanee and, you know, I guess someone from the family had known that they take lessons from me there earlier and they said, say hi to Dave. Right. And so sure enough, I meet her on the Monday morning, uh, you know, standard, there's 64 people a day and this is a group of 16 and I meet Angela and, you know. There I am two weeks later cooking her dinner in Calgary. Wow. The start of it, right? Yeah. And then, uh, and then I moved. So, I, you know, I'd like, say the, the best thing that golf has brought me is my wife. Yeah. And we're like, we say the rest is history after that. The right? rest is history. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Dave, we appreciate everything you're doing, not only for our organization and our team, but for the game of golf. It, it's important. It's, you know, like I mentioned, one of the unsung heroes in, in the industry in general. Uh, it's remarkable because just getting people with the basics or, you know, getting somebody more engaged and taking their game to the next level is what this is about. And it's about those human experiences that I think that, you know, you've shared and uh, you met your wife from it. So it's good stuff, Barry. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Swing Hard podcast. Dave, again, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed to the Swing Hard podcast, we appreciate it if you follow us along. We'll see you next time.